Sister Mary is relaxing in the bath after a long day healing the sick at her covenant. She hears a knock at the door. Who is it? She calls. It's the blind man. May I come in? Comes the reply. She figures, well, he can't see anything. And says, come on in. Next thing she hears is, hey, nice tits. Where do you want me to hang these blinds? <laughs> what up, YouTube? Let's hear. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, thank you so much for watching. If you'd be so kind, please just hit that thumbs up button just for the algorithm. And if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Um, next thing real quick, uh, if you would uh, be interested in sending me any knives uh, to check out on the channel and show off for reviews, uh, just go ahead and send me an email, let's diu79 let's di let's di at gmail.com. Uh, go ahead and send me an email letting me know you'll be interested in uh, allowing me to review one or some of your knives. I'll go ahead and send you my shipping address, and uh, we will get that taken care of. Uh, also, if you'd be so kind on Instagram, follow Peter Kottmeyer. Uh, this gentleman, I've been uh, friends with this guy on uh, Instagram for qu quite a while, and he's sent a few knives to the channel for me to review. Uh, he's been a big supporter of the channel. He's an awesome guy. He's got an awesome collection of knives. Uh, lots of Riot stuff, and we all know that Riot's, Riot's one of the best manufacturers in the game. Uh, so he's been supporting the channel. Please support him. Uh, I'd appreciate it. It's uh, Peter Kottmeyer. There's the spelling right there on Instagram. Go ahead and give him a follow. Uh, and today I'm, good, I'm just going to be doing a quick review on the uh, Riot brand K2. So let's do it up, y'all. This guy overall is uh, 8.75 inches with a just shy of four inch blade uh, and uh, just over a 3.75 inch cutting edge. Uh, and the handle is uh, just over 4.75 inches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's get some size comparisons out of the way compared to the RAT Model 1. The RAT's going to be just a little bit smaller than the, uh, the K2. And the RAT 2 is obviously going to be quite a bit smaller than the K2. Compared to the Demco knives, the Demco 8020S obviously is going to be just a little bit smaller than the K2. And the 20.5 is obviously going to be quite a bit smaller than the K2. And last but certainly not least, we've got the Spyderco knives. Spyderco PM2 is going to be just a little bit smaller than the K2. And the Pair 3 obviously is going to be quite a bit smaller. Uh, than the K2. Carry profile, these guys are closed. The uh, K2 is going to be just a little bit bigger than the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, only by a hair, and obviously quite a bit longer than the Para 3. Uh, thickness compared to the Para 3, the K2 is going to be just a little bit thicker uh, than the Para 3, not by much though. Uh, and the height on this guy is obviously nowhere near as tall as the Para 3. Get a quick blade stock thickness on this guy. Still haven't replaced the battery on this, but it's still working just fine, at least for now. And we are looking at, I think, 147 thousandths. Let's get a quick weight on this guy. Turn that on. Nice. Okay. So we are looking at 4.7 ounces for the Riot K2. All right. Now, blade steel. The blade steel for this guy is S35VN. This is a little bit of an older knife, uh, which is probably why they don't have M390, which that doesn't bother me at all. I love S35VN. It's a fantastic steel. Um, I wish they used it more, if we're being perfectly honest. Uh, the blade profile here, as you can see, is a Tanto uh, with a compound grind. Uh, we've got a hollow grind on the flat of the blade, and then there is a flat grind on the tip. Um, there is a flat that carries out to about 90% the length of the blade, and a swedge that starts about a quarter of the way down the blade and uh, carries all the way out to the tip. Uh, there is no blade plate left, right, up, or down on this knife at all. And we are perfectly centered, as you can see. Check the balance on this guy. A little bit further behind the pivot, but not too bad. That's a pretty good balance right there, if you if you ask me. 
the hardware on this guy, the pivots are a T10 on both sides. And we're looking at T8s for everything else, including the pocket clip and the steel lock bar insert. Uh, we have titanium scales, which are generously milled out internally. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, you've definitely got some internal milling going on there. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to see with, uh, with the camera here. Uh, there is a titanium backspacer with a uh, lanyard hole milled into it. And we've got a milled titanium pocket clip, which goes pretty well with the knife. I like this pocket clip a lot. Uh, it's just a standard flat milled pocket clip uh, made out of titanium, comes in and out of the pocket really, really easily, no problems whatsoever with that at all. Um, this is a titanium frame lock knife running on bearings, and as you can see, the action is absolutely superb. Uh, the bearings make this guy just smooth as butter, melted butter, actually. Uh, the action on this knife is one of the, you know, the best action I've seen uh, on on just about any knife. Uh, as you know, Riot is just their action is just sick, ridiculously smooth. Uh, so I think this is uh, pretty close to perfect as you can get as far as the action is concerned. Uh, the lockout's pretty good. Looks like at about uh, twenty percent, which isn't too bad. Um, the deployment, as you can see, very very easily. You just go ahead and hit the flipper tab, and it flies right out. It, uh, the detent is perfectly tuned on this knife uh, and the disengagement is very easily done as well. Uh, this is not milled any higher or anything like that to give you access to that lock bar, but it is scalloped on both sides for you to get access to that lock bar. Uh, and even with very large thumbs, I have no problem disengaging this lock whatsoever. The ergonomics on this guy are fantastic as well. Uh, I don't feel any hot spots or anything like that on this knife. This isn't something that you would be using hard for long periods of time. I'd say that this is more of a uh, light to medium, uh, light to medium use knife, uh, not necessarily a gentleman's knife, uh, but uh, wouldn't be using this uh, to like try to cut down trees or anything like that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. There is a little bit of jimping here on the, the end of the handle. Uh, and then there's a little more jimping, which isn't exactly functional on the backspacer here. And there's a little bit of jimping up here on the spine of the blade. Uh, the jimping is very well placed with your handle and the standard hammer grip. Your thumb falls right on top of that jimping uh, and your hand's not going anywhere at all. This isn't necessarily a knife you could use in the Vaseline factory, uh, but it's not hard to get a hold of either. I'm sure it would be better with gloves. Uh, as you can see, we've got some dimpling here towards the, uh, the front part of the scale. Uh, which looks very, very nice. And then you've got this uh, stepped milling here uh, all across the top of the scale on both sides. Looks very, very, very nice. Um, the, uh, the cutout relief for the lock bar is uh, just one single cutout. It's not very big, uh, but the, um, the lock bar tension is not such that it, it makes it difficult to uh, disengage the knife at all. Uh, this guy runs at around 325 to $350 when it came out, uh, but it's currently unavailable. You have to get this on the secondary market, so there's no telling what kind of prices you're going to be looking at for this guy. You know, whatever people uh, post it for is uh, what the price is going to be, so there's really no telling what that's going to be. Now, the grind on this knife is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the cutting geometry is really, really good. Uh, this this is a really, really good slicer. You know, I've been cutting through uh, just aluminum cans. I've been cutting, I've cut two or three two by fours in half with this guy so far. I'm just kidding, Pete. I'm just messing with you, buddy. I haven't cut anything with this guy, uh, but <laughs> it's super thin behind the edge. I'm sure it would be a great, great slicer. Uh, just a really nice knife all around. I, I can't really find anything that I would have issues with on this knife at all. Uh, I, this is definitely something that I would purchase uh, if I had the opportunity to. Um, as everybody knows, Riot has really, really good fit and finish. Um, their milling is fantastic. Their grinding is fantastic. Just everything about Riot is really, really top notch. You can't really get much better than, than this when it comes to buying a high-end production knife. Uh, now, I'm not sure um, exactly how old this guy is. I can't remember when it was that it came out. Um, but, you know, I think there's also the K3 and the K4. There's different versions of this knife that have come out in the past, but uh, none of them are available currently. Um, but this is a very, very nice knife. I'm really happy to be able to show it off. Uh, but I think that that's it for this one tonight, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And stay up, y'all. Take it easy. Bye.